Why does this exist? I can't believe I paid actual money for this. Why did I pay actual money for this? By purchasing this DVD, you are supporting your local film and television industries. Thank you. Okay, so I usually make a point of not going after easy targets like this on my channel because other YouTubers do it better. The only reason I'm even considering talking about this movie is because of how much digging I had to do to get any information about it. It just became more and more insulting, making me more and more angry, and we all know how entertaining it is to see a reviewer get tortured watching something that is obviously deliberately made to do just that, or deliberately chosen for that reason for the sake of entertainment instead of, you know, making an actual review. I don't usually do this, but the cover enticed me in because of how odd it was. First of all, this character on the front is not Bigfoot, it's a Yeti. And what's worse is that the Yeti in this movie looks nothing like what's on the DVD cover. Oh, you'll see that shortly. You're gonna love it. Second of all, what is Santa doing there? And why is there a dragon? Why is there a boy on the dragon? Well, before I show you anything from the movie itself, I need to show I actually did research on this. Instead of, you know, simply showing clips from it and making a joke about it. Although I'm gonna do that anyway, because context. Let's get the obvious out of the way first. This movie is a rip-off. It's bad. In every possible way. I think this movie was meant to be a rip-off of the movie Smallfoot. I recently made a review about that movie. I know I'm over you late, but shut up. I think that explains why this movie was called Bigfoot Shame. If they just waited a few more months, they could have ripped off Missing Link, a stop motion film from Leica Studios. I'm just wishing I was watching that instead of this. This movie was released in August 2018 and was directed by Evan Trammell. Though weirdly enough on his IMDb page, the movie has a different title. It's called A Yeti Stole Christmas and there's different designs for the boy riding the dragon, but the dragon's the same. And it's a different yeti, but I'll show you that later. Trammell is only known for directing live action smash hits, like The Blackwater Vampires, or Babies, A Miracle, and something called Star Paws? Oh, please tell me that's Star Wars, but with dogs. Although this is all he is known for, he has directed and produced over 20 animated movies, but most of them are rip-offs and sequels of said rip-offs. So right off the bat, this movie has one of the strangest openings ever, with dramatic serious music. It then has an establishing shot on what I assume is the South Pole, and then we have a scene with Santa. Yeah. This movie about Bigfoot is a Christmas movie. Happy Christmas everyone and a happy please kill me because I watched this in October. Oh by the way, this is the Yeti. This. This is meant to be the titular character. So picture this if you can. We have a Yeti and a bear who constantly says Death to Christmas. Death to Christmas! <laughs> Talking to a gingerbread man. But guess what? It gets worse because the gingerbread man is Irish. Hey, my name is Barlov, and I'm not a cookie. I'm a gingerbread man. And the Yeti is Scottish. Oh, shut it, cookie. You interrupt me one more time and I- And you'll be sorry. Insert profanities here! Is this why there was a thing on the cover for the DVD saying that this guy was competition for Shrek? Purely because he was Scottish too? And um, by the way, I haven't edited this. This is how the characters talk. They just stand and talk to each other. Every single scene, regardless of what character it is, Talk to each other like this. There's maybe just one or two scenes where characters actually have a walk cycle. And even then they're still clipping through buildings and the floor or even themselves. Apart from the fact that this design is bloody terrifying, the Yeti is a character that is probably the most pathetic thing in this movie. This Yeti wants to end Christmas forever because he hates Christmas. He doesn't give a reason, he just does. I will ruin Christmas forever. 
Oh my! Why would you do that? Because I hate Christmas. Why else? But why? Because I do, alright? Stop asking me stupid questions, you dumb cookie. By the way, on a serious side note here, while editing this video, I came across the model of the Yeti that's used in this movie when looking up information about Yetis. This 3D model is on a site called CG Trader, where it sells various 3D models. And by the looks of things, there isn't any credit to the original creators on any of the models listed on this site. Sadly, the site itself doesn't clearly credit the creator, and what's worse, I don't see any sort of credit given to the original creator of the models used in this movie either. I only see credit given to the animators. This is a bad movie, but people with actual talent made these models, and they're being animated terribly. And if they're not being credited, I highly doubt the creators were paid for their work either. This is just so sad. There is nothing more boring than a villain without a real motive. And if a villain is boring, the movie is boring because the villain of any story is the driving force behind the plot. Speaking of the plot, there is one, surprisingly enough. The Yeti has gotten a hold of a master scroll. Insert Elder Scrolls reference here. Which has the power to control the power of the bad deeds of children. He uses this scroll to banish Santa to the land of ice and thorns. I don't know how the scroll did this. I thought it was just to control the power of the bad deeds. Oh well, whatever. He does this so that he can use the scroll to give presents to all the bad children and then the good children get nothing. After this happens, we meet the real heroes of the movie. Yeah, remember the boy riding the dragon on the cover that's kind of like right hiding in the corner there? Yeah, these are the heroes of the movie. <laughs> we cut to a scene of the dragon and the boy walking through the ruins of a castle. The voice of this dragon, by the way, sounds just like James Stewart. Why must we always go on these wild and crazy adventures, Master Finn? Why does he sound like James Stewart? Because this is a Christmas movie and it's possibly trying to reference It's a Wonderful Life? I don't know. Yeah, the other thing that reviewers tend to do when they go after easy targets like this is to make reference jokes for cheap laughs. Hey! Merry Did it work? This dragon doesn't even want to be in this movie. And I don't blame him. And I don't want to be watching it. So I guess now this dragon is my favourite character in this movie. You have adventure written in your DNA. I think you mean rest and relaxation are in my DNA. You were bred for adventure, Haldor. Believe you me. I was bred for milk and cookies. Yeah, this dragon is basically me. So anyway, a raccoon shows up. And this is where I put my fearless cameo. If I had one! He basically tells the boy about Yeti's plan to banish Santa. The name's Ivar, and I just overheard a mastermind evil plan being put into action. Nope, that doesn't sound like something we'd want to be involved in. Good, then just end the movie here. I saw amongst the snow-laden trees a great big monstrous Yeti. We definitely do not want to get involved in this one, Master Finn. Listen to the dragon. Somebody please listen to the dragon. Let me get back to the story. No! His evil plans are always truly ridiculous. This movie is ridiculous. <laughs> I thought to myself, I'm going to have a big laugh at this silly at his expense. <laughs> Trying to ruin Christmas yet again, but... 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 but no! <laughs> Death to Christmas! That is just awful! So, if this raccoon overheard this, why didn't we see him in the scene before? How did Wabu end up at this castle? Who is this boy? Why did you go to him about the plan? We don't know! So Wabu warns the boy about the Yeti's evil plan, but then he says, You'll never catch up to Santa to warn him. So why did he even bother telling this kid about it if it's going to be impossible to warn Santa anyway? Also pretty sure a friggin' dragon could catch up to pretty much anything if the dragon didn't want to get out of being in this movie so badly. Oh yeah, so we're finally going to see how impossibly fast Santa's sleigh is. Okay. Well, surely we see Al Gore fly fast, right? <laughs> what am I watching? 
Why am I watching this? By purchasing this with these- SHUT UP! The boy and the dragon managed to catch up with Santa to warn him about the Yeti's plan. And wait a second! Is that a different model? It's a different Santa Claus model from the beginning of the movie! But why- why is it a different model? <laughs> why? Let me get back to the story! Get some exposition and explanation about why the Yeti hates Christmas so much. Get a lot of this, guys. Uh, it doesn't make any sense, no matter if it's in the context of the movie or not. Apparently, since the first Christmas, seven million years ago, give or take, Arvid, that's the name of the Yeti, hated Christmas because he never got a present. So every year since then, he has tried to ruin Christmas for everyone just because he never got a present. That's it! Present giving wasn't a part of Christmas until the 1800s. So, seven million years, huh? Wow. So you're telling me that Arvin has hated Christmas since it started, which according to you started seven million years ago, more or less, and that he was the first person on your naughty list. And has never received a Christmas gift in all that time! <laughs> and has tried to ruin Christmas every single year! For seven million years and you only think about giving him his present now? Even after being told about him attempting to ruin Christmas again? Every single year? This has been going on for seven million years! Are all these characters immortal? Probably. But you know what? Immortality seems to be wasted on the stupid! But then why am I surprised? This is a mockbuster! I shouldn't be this passionate about hating something that actually wants me to hate it! And the worst thing is, I had to watch this thing twice to make this damn video! <laughs> Happy freaking Christmas everyone! I'm gonna go and take a long walk off a short pier! I worry for the actual creative people that worked on this movie. As bad as these movies look, there is some genuine talent gone into this in the first place. And it's concerning that genuinely creative and passionate people make these movies. I don't think it's anything to do with the old excuse, oh, it's for kids, no one cares. That's not going to fly with me. Animation is not just for children. Animation is not a genre. It is an art form that can be any genre. Animation can be powerful and subtle. It takes effort, passion, creativity, and care to make movies like this. You can make a movie on a low budget and still make it great. Have a low budget is no excuse for laziness. Oh, do not. Do not watch this movie. Or, if you find a copy of the DVD of this movie, send it to Saber Sparks. <laughs> You're Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. I'm Mad Munchkin. Please, please, please stay creative.